Okay, it does look like the human is awakening from cryogenesis. Let me just adjust the electrical equipment before I do allow them to fully awaken. Let's turn the pressure in the exam room lower and then let's adjust the medical box of our brighter resolution. Perfect. Good. Now let's hit the awakening button and they should be awake any moment now. Hello there, yes, I did just see the cryogenesis just awaken you right from that. Welcome to outer space. I did see that you signed up for an outer space medical exam, is that correct? Perfect, I always like to double check now. Cryogenesis sometimes can freeze your muscular features and can deteriorate your teeth. Are you able to talk right now? Most people are not. Precisely. Can you shake your head yes or no? Okay, I'm going to ask you, are you okay with continuing with the alien medical examination? Perfect. We're going to be doing something known as the head to toe exam, which is a full body medical exam calculating and manipulating some of your vitals to see how you uh, are as a human. Correct. Very good. And I'm Alien2461. My earthly name is known as Luna and I learned that as you humans have such beautiful names on earth. Yes indeed. And so first what I'm going to do is I'm going to gauge the cryogenesis as thought of by adding a little bit of a cryogenesis melting solution. I'm going to ask that you keep your eyes open for this so we melt the solution so you're able to emote better. Good. Just relax. Very good. I'm going to apply that solution now just by pressing it into the skin. Good. Very good. Now, just typing that in, are you able to move your head just a little bit? Let me help. Good movement there, and good movement there, very good. And are you able to lift your shoulders? Not quite yet. Are you able to raise your eyebrows? A little bit, not quite yet. I'll let that settle in. We're going to take your vitals and do something known as a cranial nerve exam to assess the cognitive and muscular function of the human, okay? Good. So, first we're going to get your temperature. And we're first going to do it in Kelvin and then in Fahrenheit. So, relax. Okay, first in Kelvin is 300 and 95, perfect. And then let's switch that to Fahrenheit. 98, point seven. marvelous temperature. Good. Have you ever experienced a temperature that's far beyond that, such as perhaps 120 Fahrenheit? Okay, and what about 80 degrees Fahrenheit? Okay, and what about 275 degrees Kelvin? Okay, so that's technically 35 or 0 degrees centigrade. Perfect. Now I'm going to ask you, a lot of people have told me before that the humans on Earth use this to gauge air pressure. We actually gauge lung pressure. So, could you just apply this right there? And if you could, just inhale and exhale. And we're going to gauge the pressure in your lungs, okay? So, here we go. Three, two, one, inhale. And exhale. Okay. And we're looking at our inner outer space atmosphere atmospheric pressure, PSI, of about 75. Let's try that one more time. Breathe in, and breathe out. And now we're looking at about 70. 4.5, one more time, very good. Now I'm going to get just the pressure of your nose, and I'm going to place this on a nostril. Right there, 
and breathe in and breathe out okay we're looking at 35 very good so outer space pressure is a bit different than on earth um, that might seem like an old on earth but not in outer space okay great now we're going to do something that is known as the head to toe exam we're going to be looking through your scalp eyebrows and counting your eyes nose, nostrils, mouth, teeth, ears, etc. Okay, good. So first we're going to be looking for lice, if that's okay with you. Space lice is quite a thing <laughs> and they are very mean. So I like to go through and take a look. Have you ever had space lice before? Have you ever went to outer space? We welcome you. Okay, none on the scalp. Let's look at the eyebrows now. I'm just going to take a quick look. We're on this side. Okay, none in the eyebrows and in the eyelashes. Okay, none there. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to start just taking a look and counting. So, looking at your scalp, it looks like you have a round looks like that looks like a group of 10,000 and that looks like a group of 10,000 on your forehead and on your scalp it looks like you have roughly around let's say 50,433 hair follicles okay looking at your eyebrows Fourteen, 
more teeth in the past as well. I have seen humans with more teeth. Have you had more teeth in the past? Okay. And it looks like humans also don't have one set of teeth. You have plural sets of teeth. Yes. Okay. Interesting. And I do know that's not made of bone. I'm going to add just a little bit of acrylic polymer right to the teeth. That's all the cryogenesis solution. So, I'm going to ask you just to sit still. I'm just going to add just a little bit on each tooth. Okay, and I'm going to set that with something known as a blue light. I'm going to get to my other light. I'm going to set that to solidify the teeth and to an acrylic base. So keep your mouth open. Just going to. Okay, and if you could smile. Perfect. Looks like the teeth back right where they should be. Marvelous, you can relax your face now. Okay, now I'm going to take a look at the muscular distribution of your arms. So, taking a look, looks like you have two shoulders and just one part of that would connect to the arm for each shoulder. So I'm just going to take a look and take some samples. It looks like the arms lead to the ears, if I just look right up from the side. And do you only have two ears? Okay, it looks like you only have two ears. I'm going to carefully test your human hearing. I have a machine here, and it makes a sound. I'm going to ask you if you could close your eyes for a second and let me know. Can you hear the sound, yes or no? I'm going to close your eyes and you let me know. You hear the sound, raise your hand. And if you're unable to raise your hand, just shake your head in agreement. Perfect. I'm going to make the sound now and let's begin. Could you hear that? And could you hear that? Can you hear that? So it looks like 4,000 decibel. Unable. Could you hear that? Okay, 320. And that? Good. Can you hear that? Good, 440 decibels, and can you hear this? Yes, you could hear that. 430 decibels. Can you hear this? Okay, unable to hear low decibels and high decibels. And can you hear this? Good, okay. I'm going to put the object down now. Looks like decibels can be only heard at certain range for humans from Earth. And someone who listens to a lot of loud music. Okay, I'm going to have a look inside your ear and I'm going to see what the human ear looks like, okay? So just relax, I'm going to take a quick look. Oh goodness, it looks like humans have a lot of... Are you familiar with um, ear cleaning? Yes, do you use the products that you'd use to clean your ears? It's something that looks quite similar to something like this. Yeah, do not use that, as your ears are irritated. As well, if you're someone who falls asleep with, perhaps you have um, headphones that you put in your ears. I know a lot of humans from Earth do that. They listen to something, they keep headphones in. It puts a lot of pressure in your ears and can cause a lot of problems, so I never recommend you do that. Okay, let's look at the other ear. Taking a look. Yeah, just exactly the same example there. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about your hearing, okay? Let me know if you hear something from your left or your right side. Okay. I've got my hands next to your ears like this. Let me know if you hear from your left or your right side, okay? Good. Left or right. Okay. And left or right. Left or right. Good. And left or right. Good. So it looks like that does work. Perfect. What I'm going to do now is something known as a cranial nerve exam. I'm going to ask you about some scents and smells, and you let me know what they smell like, okay? So, we have an earthly sense. We're going to begin with this one right there. And this one, I quite like. I do think that there are a lot of things on Earth that smell really nice. 
nice. But I'm gonna ask you, what do you think that that smells like? There are a lot of other scents here too that we have from outer space and some will be unrecognizable. And what do you think that is? A bit like a plant, good, very good. And a bit like mint, very good. So this one is peppermint. We don't have this in outer space, but um, a lot of humans use toothpaste that looks and smells like this, isn't that correct? Yes, it's quite nice. I'm gonna move on now to one from outer space. Okay, so I'm going to put that right there. And any idea what that smells like? It smells like tea or like a medicinal herb. Okay, well this one on earth would be known as tea dream. But to us from outer space, this is what everyday outside air smells like. Isn't that quite nice? It's very um, refreshing. Okay. We have one here. That is from Earth. Okay. Could you let me know what that smells like? Like fruit. Very good. Like orange. Amazing. Humans have a great sense of smell. Looks like your olfactory sensories are working. Okay. And this one is also from Earth. Any ideas what this could be? Oh, floral. And like a flower, any idea? Perfect. This one is lavender. And I've never smelled something like lavender before in outer space. But I love it. Okay. This one's from outer space as well. And this one, I'm not too partial to, but it is quite common on Earth as well. It smells like, yeah, like a salon, or like a really strong floral scent, yes. This one is lemongrass, and what we have in outer space is that a lot of our vehicles run off of a solution that smells like lemongrass, and I'm not too partial to it. We have one more. Okay, and this one is also very common on outer space, but maybe not so much on Earth, so I'm going to allow you to just smell that. And what do you think that could be? Yes, this one's not too friendly. It smells like wood. Yes, well, this one is vetiver, and what we have, this is like any of our building materials, like desks and tabletops, smell exactly like this. I'm not too very good job. Okay, gotta write that down. Okay, and are you able to move your hands yet? A little bit perfect, that's all I need. So, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be assessing your shoulders and your knees and your hands and your toes. Very good. So, I'm gonna put my hands right down your shoulders, okay? And are you able to raise your shoulders? You do. Can you raise them? Good. Can you resist when I push down? Wow, okay, so the human muscles can actually resist that. Okay, so it looks like muscular distribution on humans is quite strong. Can you do this for me? Just put your hand next to your shoulders and hold your shoulders. Good. I'm going to push on your shoulders. I want you to resist that, okay? Three, two, one, resist. Three, two, one, resist. Three, two, one, resist. Okay. Very good, relax. I'm going to do what I'm going to ask you if you can raise your hand. I'm going to push your hand down, but I want you to resist, okay? So, I'm going to start off with this hand over here. Three, two, one, resist. Wow. Three, two, one, resist. Very good. And the other hand. Three, two, one, resist. Three, two, one, resist. Very good. Wow. I'm going to write that down. Okay. And can you move your hands like this? And can you move them backwards? As if you were to overuse your hand. No. Okay, so you know you have no need and use for the double jointed ligaments. Okay. Then what I'm going to ask you to do is can you move your feet at all or your legs or your knees? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to ask you to bend the knee. Good and relax. Marvelous. And the other one, bend the knee and relax. Marvelous. And with your toes or your ankles, can you roll them like that and move your toes? Marvellous, so humans do have the ability to do that. And do you walk with your legs? You walk with your legs? And with your hands, what do you do with them? Do you use them to 
fix parts of yourself or do you use them to craft materials such as iron or perhaps plastics? Okay, and when you do eat, do you eat food with your hands or do you only use your, your hands for working materials? Okay, so it looks like if you can use your hands like this, it looks like you have 10 separate phalanges and on your toes you have 10 separate phalanges and it looks like, can you flip your hands? Looks like you also have nails, nails for each one. I have a model of a human hand here, and it looks like you do have nails like this. Is that correct? And what do you use those for? Okay, so you use it for basic functions. Okay, and if you were to have a hand, do you think that nails that are longer would work best to maintain an upkeep with a sense of self? Okay, good to know. Thank you so much. Okay, so human cognitive function is quite well. You can identify even on non-realistic models what things are. Marvelous. Okay, and it also looks like you only have two arms. Do you have any separate arms that you can extend from your body? None, only two. Okay, I'm just going to take a look. Okay, and do you have any extra fingers or phalanges that you can uh, use to do things? Not necessarily, okay? And I'm also looking at your legs and it looks like you have two feet and you use these to walk. You actually walk. When you walk on your feet, are you walking on the bottom of your feet or on the top of them? Okay, you use the oh, interesting. Okay, I'm just making sure that we can write that down here because that means that you and I are not so different. We're just going to be examining your eyes, okay? So, I'm going to get my light out. And I'm going to ask you, can you just look at the light? Good. And can you look at the light over here? Good. And what is brighter when the light's like this or the light's like this? Good. And on the other eye, if it's like this or like this? Good. Can you look up for me? And can you look down? Can you look over here and over here? Okay. I'm going to ask you to play something with me. It's called Follow the Light. Follow the Light. I'm going to increase the speed of which you follow with as we go on. Good, follow the light. Good. Follow the light. Marvelous. Marvelous. Good. Great. So it looks like the speed of the human eye is quite comparable to that of reflexes, I do see so. Yes. And one more quick question. I'm going to test your eyes now. I'm going to just push your hair behind you so it doesn't get distracted or in the way, okay? Okay? And I'm going to ask you which hand is closer to you, okay? This is a reflex test. So, which hand is closer to you, okay? Which hand is? Okay. And which hand is now? Which hand is now? And which hand is now? Marvellous. Thank you so much. It looks like humans have quite the ability of reflex and visual a correlation between the body and within the brain. So you can also smell and you can quite literally see every type of movement. Marvellous! And it also looks like your arms, because you can raise your shoulders, you can move your arm in nearly a 180 degree rotation, is that correct? Marvellous! Thank you so much for having us to examine you today. Thank you. So we're going to actually set you back into cryogenesis one more time and you will be awakened on Earth in the morning, quite refreshed on Earth. I'm going to send you a dialogue of a long email listing all the things that we found today, including the fact that you can see very well. Okay? Thank you so much again. I'm Alien Your help in letting us get all this information allows us to progress our research. Thank you so much. Truly. Have a good rest of your night, earthly night, and I'm going to reapply you to cryogenesis one more time and send you back to Earth. Okay, good. Thank you so much for uh, visiting us in outer space, and we hope to see you back here sometime soon. Cheers! Okay, and the cryogenesis should be applying now one more time.